Before I give the bike back to Henry, I'm going to do some basic suspension setups to get it somewhere fairly close for him. So the three things we can adjust are preload, compression damping and rebound damping. The preload, we're actually going to set the sags. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to employ the services of a friend and he's about the same weight as Henry and that will give us enough sort of pressure on the bike, enough load to get the suspension in the area we want it. Then after that, I can just do some push tests to get the rebound and compression damping sort of where I want them to be. To set the preload at the front of the bike, thus altering the sag settings, we're going to be moving this big nut here up and down, which puts more or less pressure on the spring and raises the bike a little bit in comparison. To adjust that, we're going to be using a 22mm socket on the big nut. The rebound adjusters, which are just on the top here, we'll be adjusting with a screwdriver. And at the bottom of the fork are the compression adjusters down here, which are on little click adjusters we can use by hand. Now, down the back of the bike, the preload is adjusted by using a C-spanner on this big ring here with these steps on it, and the steps just push the spring up or down a little bit. The compression damping is at the top. It's a bit of a struggle to see it, but it is just here, this little knob here. And the rebound damping is this little, little screw down here. So they're the adjustments we're going to be playing with today. This is my friend Phil, and he's going to be helping me today. If you don't have any friends, you can still probably try and borrow a fill. The first thing we're going to do is we need a full length measurement of the front suspension. So Phil is going to lift the front of the motorcycle up pivoting on its side stand and I'm going to take a measurement. Little bit more, little bit more. That's it. 23. Sorry, yes. So that is a full extended fork measurement of 123 millimetres, and we're going to need to know that. For stage two, we need to take two sag measurements. One is going to be as Phil gets on the bike very gently, and the other one is going to be when Phil bounces around on the bike, and that gives us two slightly different measurements depending on the stiction in the forks. So firstly, we're going to do a gentle measurement. Ready? Yeah. Feet up. And gently remove yourself from the motorcycle. Removed. Excellent. Now I can take my tape measure and I can measure where my cable tie has moved to. Eighty-eight millimetres. We shall write that down. Measurement number three is a bouncy, bouncy measurement, so the suspension is moved further down in its stroke. Ready for a rough mounting. So we'd like to get on the motorcycle. Feet up. Yep. Bouncy, bouncy. Very nice. Feet up too. Oh, okay. <laughs> And gently get off the motorcycle. And that measurement is 85 millimetres, so that means we've only got 3 millimetres of stiction, which is pretty good. 123 minus 86.5 is. Phil's a proper engineer, don't you know? 28 and a half. 38 and a half. 38 and a half. You already worked it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I just don't work with computers all day. So that's 38 and a half mil of sag in the front. What I'd normally look for on a road bike is between 35 and 40 mil. So we're actually about right, but for the sake of the video, we will adjust that slightly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go for 40 millimetres of sag. So I want to remove one and a half turns of preload. One and a half. One and a half. And 
now I'm confident that, that will be very very close to 40 millimeters what we may do is one last sag set sag set just to be sure okay yep. excellent we've now got a sag measurement of 84 millimeters if we bounced around again we'd have 81 millimeters if we go in the middle we're about the 40 millimeters total sag that we're looking for so i'm happy with the front sag is now excellent to set the rear preload and thus the sag we need to take a measurement from the back of the swinging arm up to the seat unit ideally pretty much vertically up from the rear wheel spindle on this bike the exhaust can is in the way because on most bikes what i'd do is i'd measure from there to a mark on the seat unit like a pen mark on a piece of tape or something similar but what we're doing on this one instead is i'm going to measure from this rivet that holds the other tray in to the very back of the swinging arm so again we're going to start with a unloaded measurement. Oh, I'm not loaded. There to there. That is 465 millimetres. Okay? Yep. We shall write that down. This time, because I can't hold the bike and do the measurement at the same time, we will only take one measurement with Phil putting as much weight as he can on the bike with it sort of balancing on tiptoes. If you had two friends, that would be ideal. But we don't have two friends, so this is how we're doing it. Without kicking it in the head. Ideally without kicking it in the head, yes. Weight applied. Excellent. That is 438 millimetres. You may leave the motorcycle. We shall write that down. Checking the maths again, Phil. No bother. 465 minus 438. Fairly easy this time. You sure? No. 27? Yeah, got it. 27 mil. <laughs> He's um, a real engineer. I'll calculate it. He does. Um, so at the moment we've got 27 millimetres of sag, which really isn't enough, because I'd like about 35 millimetres in the back of the bike. So I'm going to go in with a C-spanner, adjust the preload ring, and remove some of the preload from it. Luckily, because the shock is quite awkward to get to on this for the adjustment, Henry actually still has the toolkit with the bike that has the correct C-spanner. So I'm going to take some adjustment off it, and then we'll measure again. That's 431 millimetres. So we've made a definite improvement there. We're now at 34 millimetres of sag. So we'll go a couple more clicks and we'll be exactly where we want to be. Right, we're now going for the final sag measurement, hopefully. Ready? Yes. And 27 mil, which in my maths gives me 38 millimeters of sag. So again, I'm in that 35 to 40 mil range, so that should be pretty much spot on. Now that I'm happy with my sag measurements of between 35 and 40 mil, we're going to move on to the damping. As a bit of a side note, if I was setting this up for track use, I would be looking for sort of 28 to 30 mil of sag. The bike needs to be stiffer on track because of the extra cornering loads and the extra braking load you'd be putting on it. So on the road, 35 to 40 mil. On track, much nearer 30 millimetres is better. So now we're going to move on to the damping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do push tests on the bike and using a little bit of feel and a little bit of experience, we'll see how the bike reacts to the load being put on it. Okay. 
as you can see from those early movements, the fork moves up and down in a nice fluid motion and there's plenty of control. And on track, that would actually be quite a good setting because the suspension's always controlling quite a lot. On the road, it's probably a little bit firm. A lot of this is down to experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some rebound damping first to see if we can get the bike to just move a little bit quicker so that it recovers from bumps and that sort of thing. I'm actually going to start by counting how many clicks we have from our current position to all the way in so that we know we've got them both equal. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, six. Excellent, so they were even. They should be, I built them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move them out to I'm going to try 10 clicks, see what they feel like. When you're setting the clickers, you want them all the way in, just so they're bottom, and the first click out is zero. So that's zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Zero. Right, we're now at 10 clicks, we were at 6. Let's see what difference it makes. That's much better already. You can see the fork actually moves down the stroke faster because the rebound dappers do a little bit of everything. But it also, it comes back much quicker. And you see the bike actually sort of moves and settles. It wants to be controlled, but it definitely wants to move enough so that it can recover from bumps. We're very, very close now to what I think is a good setting. I'm just going to go a couple more clicks. I think for a road bike, that's pretty close. Now, the compression dampers, they will make a little bit of difference, but nowhere near as much. So what I'm going to do with the compression dampers is I'm just going to wind them all the way in, see what it feels like, and then bring them out halfway through the range and again see what it feels like. So that's the adjusters wound all the way in. As you can see, the compression damping doesn't really make that much difference. So what I'm going to do with those is I'm going to set them about in the middle of their range and then they'll make more difference when you're riding it because the faster the wheel moves over bumps and bits, the more the compression damping actually makes an effect. So that's set the compression damper in the middle of its range. If it was a track bike, it would be a little bit soft because obviously there's more load in the corners and there's more load generally when you're braking them bits. But on the road, where you want to go from bumps a lot more, that's pretty good. So we're actually at 12 clicks on both adjusters. To set the rear of the bike up is pretty much the same routine as doing the front. We've got a fairly sturdy piece on the bodywork where it mounts to the frame. So I'm going to push down on there and I want to see the bike moving relatively easily and returning at a reasonable pace. That to me feels quite hard. The rear does tend to be harder than the front. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some rebound adjustment out of it because that affects rebound and compression, and then see where we are. So now we're going to try to get two turns fully out.
and you can see straight away that moves much easier. So I'm going to come a little bit further now. Going to come out to two and a half turns out, which is nearly all the way out. That's pretty good there. I'm just going to tweak a quarter of a turn just so it controls a little bit more. I'm happy with the feel from that for the rebound. Compression feels okay as well, but we're gonna play with the compression adjuster, see what difference it makes. That's now wound all the way in, so it's on its hardest setting. And it makes a little bit of difference, but not a vast amount. That's all the way out at 24 clicks. And the compression adjuster really doesn't make that big a difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it in the middle. And then, when Henry rides it, or when I ride it, if we feel the bike jarring over bumps, we can put a little bit more or a little bit less damping in it. So I'm happy that both ends of the bike are sort of nice and supple for going over the bumps. The rear does feel a little bit harder than the front, but generally when you're riding the bike, that's actually what you want so that it holds its geometry. If you have them too soft, it will just squat and run wide everywhere and be horrible. So, I think that's pretty good. I'm happy that everything moves okay. So I'm gonna call that job done. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I present to you Henry's Honda VTR 1000 SP1 project, now finished. Fresh from its MOT with only a minor discrepancy for noisy exhaust pipes, and now basking in the beautiful Lincolnshire sunshine. The bike's come up absolutely wonderfully. The sun catching the fastenings that have been replated and the bike generally looking absolutely lovely. It's actually very very close to looking like new, which we can't really ask for much more. The bike's just come out really really well and I am really proud that Obsession Engineering have brought it back to its best. The only downside now is I'd really really like to go and ride it, but the roads have been salted and it's cold and wet. So that's going to have to wait. But I promise you there will be a riding review of Henry's Honda. Just not sure when. The day has finally come to give Henry his bike back. I think it's turned out lovely. Hopefully Henry will like it too, because he's already paid me. On that point, what have we actually spent? Well, the budget went out of the window relatively early, if I'm honest. Overall, in part, the bike has cost about £1,800 to refurbish like this, and that includes the tyres, the powder coat, the replating, uh, the seals and bushes and bits for the shocks and the forks, bearings and seals throughout the bike, uh, the pipe's been re-sleeved and repacked by Paul over A16, the paintwork has been uh, tidied up in a couple of places, and quite a lot of sort of relatively small items, bits of sort of polish and paint and that sort of behaviour. There's also been quite a lot of labour. The bike in the end has taken about 70 hours to, uh, to turn around, which, if Henry's wife watching, costs £1 an hour-ish. So I suppose we might best go and get Henry and see if he likes his bike. Oh. Awesome, absolutely awesome. I want to light that in the mat. That's come on beautifully, isn't it? Oh, wow. That's a million times better. 
great work. Shock. Watching it all go through all the videos and everything, and just having those little teasers has just been amazing. Thank you very much, Dave. Absolutely excellent. Oh, just such a shame I can't ride it. <laughs> Henry's Honda might be finished, but there will be another project along very, very soon at Obsession Engineering. So please like and subscribe to the channel and it'll be here before you know it.